Hello, everyone. It's Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is the 3rd of March, Thursday, 2022. Today's um, topic is Larry Elder is to speak at uh, Washington and Lee. At the end of this month, Black political commentator and attorney Larry Elder will be lecturing at Washington and Lee University's chapel under the sponsorship of the General's Redoubt, an alumni group working to retain WNL's traditional values. The Southern California resident received more votes than any candidate opposing Governor Gavin Newsom during the state's failed recall election last year. Elder is a fierce defender of conventional American values, which he learned to appreciate after he took the time to learn about how his own father had to work to provide for the elder family when anti-Black racial discrimination was a genuine reality. While I do not know what Elder's opinion of Robert E. Lee might be, I have heard Larry tell of his epiphany in favor of traditional values after learning of his father's story on YouTube, where he had tells the story himself. Now, to get information, you know, on how you can watch this uh, presentation on March 31st, uh, March 31st at the uh, University Chapel, you can watch it online. But to get information on that, contact the General's Redoubt. I'll put their link down below. Now, the latest General's Readout newsletter also discloses some controversial remarks by a WNL economics professor named James Casey. This is important because almost 80% of the faculty at uh, WNL voted, oh, what, I guess about a year and a half ago to remove the name of Lee from the university. And I think this kind of shows what the attitude of some of those people are. Now, although he is a Caucasian himself, Dr. Casey has a low opinion of white voters, particularly white males. A number of his comments are revealed in uh, a January 20th, 2021 article from Campus Reform. And here's some of his remarks. In November 2020, he tweeted, quote, as I walk around cities and observe who does and does not wear masks, I have to ask myself, what the F is wrong with white people? Four exclamation points, close quote. And I find, <laughs> Dr. Casey, what is wrong with Democrats when they finally let the mask no longer be a requirement in Congress the day before President Biden's State of the Union address. This mask wearing has been not driven by, quote, the science. It's been driven by politics almost from the beginning. Okay, secondly, in response to a December 2019 tweet from someone named Joyce Aline asking, quote, what is it that Republicans are willing to burn this country down for? Close quote. Casey answers, white supremacy. Close quote. She asks, what do Republicans want to burn the USA down for? Casey answers, white supremacy. The Republicans will destroy the country for, in order to rebuild it as one that is based on white supremacy. This guy is an economics professor at Washington and Lee, James Casey. After discovering that most whites voted for Trump in 2016, as opposed to Hillary, in January 18, excuse me, in January 2018, Casey tweeted, quote, I suggest temporary suspension of voting rights for all white people. Three exclamation points, close quote. And in 2017, Casey speculated, quote, White people have some type of genetic cognitive defect, close quote, for supporting President Donald Trump. Concerning the October 7th, 2020 debate between then Vice President 
Mike Pence and current Vice President Kamala Harris, Casey remarked, quote, if you are a white man and you watched the debate last night and you are not angry at Mike Pence, there's something, something fundamentally wrong with you. Now, I don't know why anyone should be angry with Pence, who has persistently, over the time that I've seen him on the political scene, conducted himself as a gentleman. That's not true for Harris. Harris, Kamala Harris is one of the most obnoxious personalities in the political spectrum that you can find. Which is one of the most obnoxious personalities on the political stage. Now, one WNL student is quoted in the campus reform article as questioning whether Dr. Casey can grade his students objectively, given the professor's passion for his political biases. That student is going to be graduating in May and going to a prominent investment banking firm. Okay, so let me um, share something here. As my latest book, The Dreadful Frauds, Critical Race Theory and Identity Politics, $16 at Amazon in paperback, $6 in Kindle. This is an important book because if critical race theory and identity politics become the standard interpretation of American society, in history, there will be no hope for, uh, for any kind of retaining any kind of memorials to anything Confederate. And that would include the name Robert E. Lee. And, and it's also important to note that the, uh, those of us, those who criticize us, who criticize critical race theory, uh, claim that we don't want to you know, discuss and have history disclose the dark side or the uh, ominous side of our history, particularly with respect to slavery. But my age, I'm 74 years old. I remember as a boy being taught about slavery and we were not told it was, there was anything good about it, nothing. And I grew up in the South. There was, we have been taught, not just me, but the generations are younger than me have been taught about slavery. There's critical race theory is different. Critical race theory, is a doctrine that proposes, postulates that whites are endemically racist, whether they admit it or not, and they cannot realize if they deny it, for example, they cannot see that they are in fact racist. In fact, critical race theory basically concludes any white who denies, denies it is really just demonstrating that they are racist. So this book is necessary to those who want to understand what's going on and how crucial it is to uh, the future of America and certainly crucial to any kind of uh, future recognition of the good side of the soldiers that went to battle in the, to defend their homelands during the, uh, during the Civil War. Anything good about the uh, antebellum South? Um, it doesn't say, it, you know, it, nothing of that is going to survive. I'll just repeat it. Nothing of that is going to survive if critical race theory and identity politics become the standard interpretation. So, with that, you know, I'll just sign off for today and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and let me just mention, you know, go to uh, Amazon and or Barnes and Noble, uh, go to my author page and Take a look at the books there. If you like them, buy them. And if you if you if you read them, if you like them, please give them a five star rating. That helps us a lot. Okay, that's our message for today, and I'll see you next time.